our next guest is the um, managing general partner, co-chair of the New York Yankees. And, and I got to give Hal Steinbrenner credit uh, because, Don, you'd agree with me. Uh, a lot of the people that own teams in this town don't like to face the music. They don't like to mm -hmm. answer questions. And it's very, very difficult to get them on the air. And one thing about Hal... Uh, he's a guy that will face the music. He'll come on when there's something going on with his team. And, and today is one of those times, and he's nice enough to join us here on the show. Hal, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you doing today? Hanging in there, guys. How are you? We're doing okay. Uh, what was your initial thought after the Yankees lost that game five, 2-1? Uh, to one? Well, it's been a tough weekend for me. I, I, I mean, I'm very disappointed, obviously. We invested a, a lot of time, energy, money into the team last off season, and we all felt that we had a team that could win a championship, and we failed to do that. We didn't even come close. So, you know, at this point in time, all I can do is apologize to our fans. They deserved a better outcome than they got, period. I mean, they, have, they just did. Have you been able to sit down as you're thinking about it and, and, and put your finger on what went wrong? I just think the whole year, I, especially with the offense, and I know we've had other issues, and we had a uh, rash of injuries the way a lot of teams do, but our offense just inconsistent at playing up to their potential to me. Um, so many lows with the ups, so many downs with the ups and highs with the lows, and, and the lows were every bit as extreme as the highs, and the highs were, were pretty good. Um, when they were on, they were on, but it just seems like every game, including some of the postseason games, I, you just couldn't tell which offense was going to show up. Uh, Hal, before I get started, it's my first chance to talk to you after the passing of Hank. I just wanted to pay my condolences. He was a really, really nice man when I got a chance to meet him, so my condolences there before we get started. Um, Thank you. Now to, the, now to the business at hand. Who are you the most disappointed with? You know, I don't, there's, there's, there's not one individual. I guess I should be most disappointed with me. I'm responsible for all this in, in, in the end. Um, and, and look, there's numerous people in this organization that are, that feel the same way I do. But as far as one specific player, if that's what you're asking, there, there isn't one. I just, I, I didn't like what I saw in the, in the inconsistency. I, I didn't like, especially in a short season, I didn't like the, the, the lows, so many lows going with the highs. And, uh, you know, we went 50, we lost 15 out of 20. I, th I think a rash of injuries kind of started that train. Um, but again, we got to get through that. And the last week of the season, we had no excuses, didn't play well. And uh, one or two of the playoff games, obviously. So it's just, uh, it, it, it's disappointing because the expectations, of course, were so were so high. But I, I, I don't, I didn't like the, the team not playing up to its potential as, as much as it did not. You know, not only you know, do you and your family own the team, but you, you've been a fan of the team since you were a kid. So you, you have fan feelings as well. Um, I just wondered what your feeling was with the, the tack that your team took in starting game two the way they did, using Garcia and then bringing in Hap, when most of the baseball world said, what are they doing? They have enough to beat the Rays. Why are they going about it that way? What were your thoughts on that? Look, I know this is a source of great debate. I, I thought the logic was sound. Uh, we're not the only team that employed that plan in this postseason. But the bottom line is, in order for a plan to be successful, the different components of the plan have to be well executed. And that didn't happen here. Hap struggled, and he struggled significantly, and, and eventually the plan failed. Did you, would you say the plan main failure was that maybe Hap wasn't completely on board? Hap, Hap, my understanding is, and this is a, this is a question to ask Cashman, and uh, he will be answering questions sooner rather than later, I'm sure. Um, Hap, Hap understood the situation, and this is not by any stretch of the imagination, my understanding is, the first time Hap has come into a game in the postseason uh, once the game started. So, But it's, it's a question to ask Cash. Do you ever, uh, I mean, this is a, an organization and a brand that's built on championships. They've won more championships than any professional team in this country. Uh, and you've won one in 20 years. And you have not certainly gone about it in a cheap way. You've poured a lot of money into it. Is there ever a point where you get really sick and tired of them going, well, what are we doing here? I spent all this money on Garrett Cole, and we still don't get to the World Series. I mean, are people called up on the carpet in front of you and, and told to explain what went on? 
Every year we don't win a world championship, Michael. That that happens, and it's going to happen again. And we're going to we're going to look look at everything we do and the people we have. And uh, there may be changes. There may be there may be no changes. Um, you know. So, but yes, absolutely, we're going to do that. I mean, look, I, we're not one to make excuses. I, I think we have a pretty good reputation at that. But at the same time, if you're going to start conjecturing opinions about things like that, you do need to look at all the facts. Uh, this is a different baseball world than 15, 20 years ago, as far as competitive balance and other factors. And you know. We, we have had two years with some pretty significant injuries uh, where significant players were out for significant amounts of time. So no excuses, but, again, if you're going to delve into that, you've, you've got to examine all the facts and, and logically think this through. But, yes, we, we are going to be looking at everything, what we could have done different, what we can do different going forward. How, how does it um, weigh on you with players that have been a part of the organization for a long time, the Tanakas, Sanchez, now even a, a judge, um, how challenging is it to sort of look at them as the commodity they are on the baseball field and then also sort of the role they become as part of the organization and, and part of the Yankee family? Well, look, all of that gets taken into account by me. That's my job. Uh, but the, the number one goal, as we've always said, is to win a world championship and, and, and field the best team we possibly can to accomplish that goal. But all those kind of factors are taken into any decision I make in the off season as, as, as far as a player. Because it's important. It's part of the tradition and, and players, you know, great Yankee players that have been with us for years and years. Uh, it's, it's an important. It's important to the fans and it's important to us. Now, I, I've always heard, Hal, that you are on board with all of the analytics that your team does. Uh, that you're an analytic person in your own right in business and everything. But do you believe that it's it's so one way that it's all analytics and that there's not a lot of gut involved? Yeah, but it's not, Michael. And, and, I, and, and I am on board with our analytics, but at the same time, I always preach balance, which is why we're getting ready to start pro scouting meetings uh, to look at our team and what else might be out there and how we can improve. And the analytics people are part of those meetings, but so are all the pro scouts. Uh, the intuition part to me is, is very important as well. Uh, the boots on the ground, the scouts uh, watching players, that, that's all part of what we do. Believe me, our pro scouting department is, is pretty large as well. But do you believe that games are managed by what's spit out by a computer, uh, all the information that's given to, uh, to Aaron Boone, or do you believe that Aaron Boone has the right, like what a Billy Martin had and a, and a Buck Showalter had and a Joe Torre had, to actually do things by the gut? I, I think I think in the end he is the field commander, and I think Cashman would agree with me that in in you know in in the middle of the game he will he will do what he what he wants to do. But but Aaron certainly appreciates all the analytics, knows they're important. They are important. Um, but you know he still is the field commander in the middle of the game. And believe me, he was. Well, you want to keep talking about this game too? Then he he was on board. Right. He was on board, and he'll tell you that. And how we're fans of Aaron, and we we think he does a phenomenal job. But if you go back to the end of the 2017 season, you guys parted ways with Joe Girardi and now three years later have not been able to reach the lengths you were hoping to reach after making that move. Should we judge it deeper than just the wins and losses? Or, or do you look back and say that maybe this team hasn't lived up to that change at manager? Well, if you're talking about Aaron Boone, I mean, Aaron Boone is a good baseball man. He's a good leader. Uh, he has the respect of the players. Aaron Boone will be back next year. Um, that's, that's just a fact. How about the coaches? Are you thinking about any changing changes in the coaching staff? We we have not sat down yet to to discuss anything about coaches, anything about players. As I said, the pro scouting meetings haven't even begun yet. Our focus has, has been has been 2020, uh, but we're gonna we will get into all that as we always do, and we will look to see if there's any places we need to improve, and we won't be afraid to make a change. How when I looked out from the booth at Yankee Stadium. It was so sobering to see all those empty seats. And that's the way it was every single one of the 60 games. So there's no other way to spin it. Everybody in baseball lost money. Um, and that's, that's just a fact of life. I think everybody in this world is losing money because of what's happening. That being said, are the losses this year going to impact the money that you will spend next year? Well, we'll see. I mean, it, it depends what, what kind of money is, is going to be required to be spent based on what we look at and, and decide uh, needs change. But, the, look, there's no doubt we sustained significant losses this year, more so than any other team in baseball. Uh, it's just been a, it's been a crazy year. But we're just going to have to see what we really feel we need and what that's going to cost. And we'll go from there the way we do the way, every year. And, and I know it's not about the money for you guys because you spend, you know, a lot of it. But 
Hal, do you look and say, we, we lost to a team that has a payroll of $190 million less than us. If we were going to be in the analytics, does it make sense to have a payroll this big if, if, if you're going to lose to teams that have payrolls that are a fraction of what you have? Well, look, for, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because you can't take anything away from the from the Tampa Bay Rays. They're a very, very good team with a very deep roster and very good baseball operations people. Like we have very good operations, baseball operations people. But no, I haven't. I haven't pondered that. I, I know that's been a theme in the newspapers or wherever else, but I have not pondered that. I, I only see the team in front of me. They're a very, very good team. And, um, you know, they've used their revenue sharing money well throughout the years and their draft picks and, and everything else. And, and we are where we are. Did I think we should have beat them? Did I, did I feel that we were better than them? Yes. But uh, it just it didn't end up that way. Are you happy with the job that Brian Cashman has done for you? Yes. I mean, obviously, I've known Brian uh, forever. And uh, the way he goes about doing things uh, it is in a very objective way. He listens to everybody, uh, pro scouting and analytics, and anybody else that wants to wants to get into his ear. And uh, I know the people that work under him respect him, and, and Boone respects him. And uh, it's you know it's it's been good. And uh, we're just going to have to keep plugging away. Do you ever feel how? And we're talking with Hal Steinbrenner, the managing general partner, co-chair person of the New York Yankees. Do you ever feel saddled by the? Um, the past performance of how your dad ran the team, because your dad did not suffer losses very well and would make changes immediately. You're the complete opposite of that, but there's still a fan base that grew up with your dad as the owner that when the Yankees don't win, they automatically think there are going to be changes. Do you ever have to sit back and deal with that and know that that's their feeling? Oh, absolutely, and, and I, res I respect that feeling. I mean, they, they do have to remember there was quite a few years when we didn't even make the playoffs when those kind of changes were being made and people were being fired. But, um, yes, I absolutely understand that. Is it going to change the way I go about doing what I do? No, but I certainly respect that, and I understand that, and, and it does not bother me. Have you been able to get a handle at all on why there have been so many injuries? Well, we had the, look, we went into the postseason healthy, and for the most part, we were healthy uh, throughout the short postseason. I mean, I know Severino was out with Tommy John, but uh, you're, you're going to see the kind of changes we made, not just with personnel, but with procedure. You're, I think you're going to see a big difference next year. We had the, the rash of injuries in the middle of this short season, uh, but then we got healthy, and we, we stayed healthy. Um, so, and I, I think you're going to start to see that, that continue. Do you look at, not to tip your hand, but I'll ask you, do you look at DJ LeMayu as a priority to come back? Well, I think I would be doing my job if I didn't didn't recognize what what a contribution he made to the club and how, how good of a player he is. So I, I recognize both those things. I'll leave it at that. Um, fans in the building for next year, do you have any indication that there could possibly be fans for opening day? I have no idea, and neither do you guys. Um, you know, we'll just have to see what happens with this virus, with vaccines, and nobody would nobody would love it more than me. Uh, it, it was a surreal experience to be playing regular season games with, with no fans. Uh, didn't like it any more than any of you did. So hopefully we get back to some normalcy in 2021 because uh, I've about had it with 2020. Yeah, it has not been a great year. Yeah. I, I always wonder about, you know, Hal Steinbrenner, the guy who's out front, the guy who's essentially the owner of the team with his family, and then Hal Steinbrenner who's watching that final game uh, in front of his TV. Do you get angry? Do you throw things? Do you yell? I mean, how do you consume that game and actually consume that loss afterward? How, how does Hal Steinbrenner deal with that? I can probably be a bit more feisty than people would would think to the point where my wife is closing doors uh, to try to to try to not hear me. So uh, yes, I absolutely get get frustrated and aggravated, uh, like all of our fans do. And uh, and uh, there's 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 certainly many times I raise my voice. Believe it or not, was uh, was Game Five one of those times? Game five was one of those times. Uh, there were numerous times, even in games we win sometimes, Michael. I will indeed uh, raise my voice and get aggravated and even even mad. It, it's we, we talk about this all the time, Hal, on the show with, with the analytics that the postseason is such a crapshoot. You look at the look at the money the Dodgers have spent, and they haven't won since 1988, and they've been a phenomenal team. Uh, is Is there a certain truth to that? That you build a team for 162, but once you get to the playoffs, there's a lot that is beyond your control. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, look, key injuries could be one of them. Uh, you losing, you having a first bad game or two in a series, short series, even a first bad game. 
Uh, it's especially the, these shorter series, the three game series, the five game series. Uh, they they can be dangerous. So it, it is it is a different it is a different world. It's a second season. That's what it is. All right. How about a positive? You spent a lot of money to bring Garrett Cole into the fold, and as far as I could tell. I mean, I don't know how the nine years going to play out, how, but it looks like money well spent. He's everything that you would want in somebody to represent your team, to be effective on the field. What was your take on Garrett Cole's first year as a Yankee? As advertised, uh, everything you just said, uh, plus highly intelligent, which we knew going in, and an incredibly hard worker, and he instills other people to work harder than they than they might even otherwise do. I mean, he is he is uh, he's hardcore. Uh, we we got exactly what we uh, what we wanted in Garrett. Do you scratch your head in in bewilderment at what happened with Gary Sanchez this year? Yeah, look, I uh, it, it is surprising. I guess we'll just have to see about about next year. Obviously, going forward, but it's an incredible amount of talent, and we're gonna he's gonna keep working his his uh, backside off, and we're gonna keep keep helping him in every way we can, and uh, it all goes well. I, I I believe we'll get him back. Now I know that you still have to talk to your scouts, as you said, and have a you know long meeting with Brian and probably Aaron. But do you see the 2021 Yankees being vastly different than the 2020 Yankees? Just don't know yet, Michael. I mean, again, until we until we start the process of even discussing it uh, in these pro scouting meetings, it's just too early to to spe- speculate what we're going to look like. Uh, Hal Domingo Herman's eligible to come back. He he served his time with the suspension. But as you move forward with him as an organization, do you just have to feel comfortable with what he was accused of doing? Or is it just, hey, he's eligible, he served his time, he's a Yankee? Well, look, I have to absolutely feel comfortable that that he deeply, deeply regrets and is sorry for what he what he did. And I absolutely have to be comfortable with the fact that he's turned his life around. Mm. Uh, those two things are for sure. Uh, as far as... As far as where we go with him, I, I don't know. Again, that's another discussion that I have to have with not just Brian Cashman and all, but my, my family, and and we, we will see. But there's no doubt he, he needs to prove that he's turned his life around and that he is absolutely realizes how horrific that was. How obviously, you know, when, when Aaron was asked this question after Game 5, he didn't react that well to it, whether the season was a failure. And he said, none of those guys in there are a failure. Your dad used to always say, if we don't, if we don't win the World Series, the season was a failure, which is a hard price to pay because you could have a really good year and not win a World Series. Do you look at this season as a failure? You know, first of all, it was such an uh, obviously unusual season. But the ra- the reality is I look I look at the successes of any season and the failures of any season. Overall, our objective was to win a world championship. We failed in that endeavor. Does that mean the entire season was a failure? No, I don't think winning 10 in a row was a failure. And last year, I don't think winning 100 games was a failure. Uh, I know people disagree with me on that, but I, I look at the season as a whole. We failed in our objective, but there were, there were positives and there were successes along the way do you recall another off season where you had so many hard conversations to look forward to um about really integral players on this team i mean i'm sure i'm sure in the last 12 years there were uh, i i have not thought about that to to pick one but yes there's going to be and again part of these decisions are you're talking about players that you know the the fans love that have been here a long time and have made great contributions and you know none of none of it's going to be easy but that's that's our job and the focus is fielding a championship caliber team again in 2021 i'm curious how i don't know how much you consume social media i know you you probably check on the show since it's on the yes network every now and then but do you realize how angry yankee fans are I, I don't. I don't. Well, we obviously have social media people. So yes, is the answer to that question. Do I? Am I on social media personally? No, I'm not. Don't do Facebook. I'm just never, never got into that technology. I guess. But yes, of course. I and I understand it. I understand it. As I said, they deserve better than 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 the results they got this year. Hal, we appreciate you coming on as always. And you know, whenever you come on, you say, "Ask me whatever you got." So we asked you whatever we had, and you answered. So uh, we appreciate. It. I know it's going to be a busy off season, and stay well, stay safe with you and your family. Stay safe, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. So that's Hal Steinberg, Yankees managing general partner, co-chairperson. So he did.